Hi, I'm Mrs. D. Math. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be covering distance between two points in eighth grade math. This is a continuation of the Pythagorean theorem videos, which you can find linked below if you haven't watched those yet. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, to solve for the distance between points r and t. So here in my graph, I'm given three points, r, s, and t. And I can make a triangle based on those three points. I can tell pretty quickly that it is a right triangle. So we want to figure out the distance of the red line between R and T. It's pretty easy to find the distance between R and S and S and T. So for this one, we're going to go ahead and just use our knowledge of graphs and we're going to count. So I can clearly see between S and T, we're going to make this our A because it is the horizontal line here. So between S and T, we are moving one, two, three, four places. So the distance there is four. And then between S and R, this will be our B. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the distance there is seven. So now we can use that information to solve for our C. So I'm gonna plug this into my formula. I have four squared plus seven squared equals c squared. Four squared is 16, seven squared is 49, and c squared is what I'm solving for. So when I add 16 and 49, I get 65, and that equals c squared. So here I have to do the opposite of squaring, which is the square root, and so this cancels, c equals. Now, I'm gonna go back. C is approximately, I know 65 is not a perfect square. So I'm gonna find approximately 65. We can either use our knowledge from our approximating square roots. I know that the perfect square before 65 is 64, and that's eight, so it's gonna be between eight and nine. The next one is 81. 65 is a lot closer to 64, so I'm going to estimate this at 8.1 or 8.2. You can also plug it in on a calculator and round to the nearest tenths. So we can also use the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between two points by using the ordered pairs. We would have an x1 and a y1, and we would also have an x2 and a y2 on a graph. Now, we will have three points, so I'm gonna have to show you how to plug this into the formula because it can get a little bit tricky. So the distance formula says d equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So if we have a graph here, we have three points and we have drawn already our right angle. And instead of counting the distance this time, we're gonna actually use the ordered pairs. Now, this is small enough that we could count the distance, but there will be instances where you might need to measure something and you can't just count the distance and put it on a graph. You might have a situation where you wanna find the distance between your location and somewhere on another location at a lake and you can't just go through the lake and measure. So you would find a point outside of the lake that both places make a right angle, and then you can use that information and measure there to figure the other parts out. So let's see here how we can use this. So I have my three ordered pairs here, and I'm using the ordered pairs with the x1, y1, x2, y2, so that you can see how to fill in the formula a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and also label our points on the graph. So this point down here is going to be at nine, two. The point up here is gonna be at nine, nine. And then this third point over here is gonna be at negative one, nine. So now when I go to plug it into my formula, I have D equals. D is going to represent your distance over here, which is actually your C, your hypotenuse. So that's where your D is going to come in. So we'll call this D for the distance. So now I need the square root of x2 minus x1. Now you want to get your x's from the horizontal line here. So this is going to be your A. So your 
a distance is your x's. So in my first set of parentheses, my x2 is 9 minus my x1 is a negative 1, and all that's in parentheses squared, plus now my y2 minus y1 is my b, so that's going to be my vertical line, this one, this distance right here. So in this case, my y2 is 2 minus my y1 is 9 squared. So now I can go ahead and solve. So d equals the square root, 9 minus a negative 1 is 9 plus 1, which is 10 squared, plus 2 minus 9 is negative 7. Now, in this case, you're going to end up with the absolute value because negative 7 times negative 7 is also a positive 49. So we're going to go back to green so we can see the steps. 10 squared is 100. Negative 7 squared is 49. That negative's inside the parentheses, so it's negative times negative is a positive. So now d equals the square root of 149. Now I know this isn't a perfect square. I do know the perfect square before 149 is 144, and that means that d is going to equal 12 point. And then the perfect square after that is the square root of 169, which is 13. This is much closer to 144 than 169. So I'm going to say 12.2. And again, this is approximately. It's not exact, so we don't have an equal sign. We just have an approximate sign. So I know this distance here is approximately 12.2 points on the graph. So just to recap, we can see that when we're filling in our formula for our x1 and x2, we want to keep our x's on the horizontal, since that's our x-axis. And then we want to do our b's, which is our y's, on the vertical, since that's my y-axis. So your y minus y is going to be the two points that are vertical, and your x minus x is the two points that are horizontal. Thanks for joining me today for the distance between two points in eighth grade math. This is a difficult concept, and you may want to go back and watch the Pythagorean Theorem videos, which are also linked below. I'm Mrs. D. Math. Have a great day. Bye.